Welcome back to the latest anime news for the week ending April 10th, 2021. Let us just jump right on in. Everybody, it's happening. It's actually happening. Fans of Macross and Robotech rejoice. Big yes. West, yeah. Studio Nui, and Harmony Gold USA announced on Friday that they have finally come to an agreement regarding the international distribution of anime works in the Macross yeah. franchise. <laughs> Oh man! Um, About bloody time. No kidding. No um, joke. We'll get. We'll, we'll. I'll try to explain this. <clears throat> um, the agreement will immediately allow the the worldwide distribution of most Macross films and television sequels, while still affirming uh, Harmony Gold's exclusive international rights to the forty one Macross characters and media used in the Robotech franchise. Um, it also confirms that Big West will not oppose the Japanese release of an anticipated upcoming live action Robotech film. Live yeah. action. That's, yeah, yeah that, that's been in yeah. the works for a while. Um, uh, the companies have also agreed to cooperate on the distribution of future Macross and Robotech projects for the benefits of both franchises. Now, it's unclear whether that means that they are just going to allow it or actually, you know, take part in that distribution. If they're just basically saying, we will check the box allowing it to happen or if they're going to actually like, press discs. We don't know yet. Um... Robotech.com states a new agreement will allow Big West and Harmony Gold to chart a new path that will unlock the great potential of both the Macross and Robotech franchises worldwide, blah, 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 blah. For those of you not familiar with the long history behind the agreement, here is an attempt at a summary. Um, <laughs> so, Studio Nui launched Macross in 1982, huge success, uh, working with advertising agency Big West and Studio Tatsunoko as production partners. The franchise, of course, spawned several more TV series, movies, video series, etc. In 84, Tatsunoko licensed overseas rights to the first Macross series, plus Muspida and Southern Cross, to Harmony Gold. Harmony Gold then edited and rewrote footage from all three of those shows into Robotech in 1985. Um, and, like, literally did it in, like, eight months. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, Robotech also inspired two sequels and has had two live-action movie picture deals signed, though neither of those have gone into production yet. Going backwards, in the late 90s, Big West filed a claim against Tatsunoko, <laughs> claiming that the rights to make sequels to Macross belonged to them and not Tatsunoko. The court technically ruled in favor of Tatsunoko, saying they had the right to license Macross to Harmony Gold, but ruled that Big West retained the rights to 41 of the original designs used in the series. So as of 03, Harmony Gold held the right to make derivative works of Muspita and Southern Cross and also of Macross, except those 41 designs used in Robotech and owned by Big West. So now, after nearly 20 years, Big West will no longer contest Hatsunoko and Harmony Gold's license of these designs worldwide, and the rest of the Macross franchise will also be released to the world. Now pop <sighs> quiz, kids. No. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> well, I mean, the good pop quiz would be, and how much money did this need <laughs> to be dumped in, you know, in front of them yeah. to have this happen? Yeah. And to be clear, like, <clears throat> folks have got around this. Like, there was a release of original Macross, unedited, uncut, you know, in, in North America. Like, that happened like, about 10 years ago or so. Right. Um, so there have been exceptions in the ways around it. Um, but it's it's been legally so complicated, everyone's just been like, no, no way, man. I'm just not getting involved. So, I have heard Scuttlebutt online that this was all about the Robotech movie. That basically, I, get, I think it's Sony, um, waited in and said, you are all going to resolve this so that we can make our movie. Who knows? Um, <laughs> you children, the fact that stop this, complaining, the... stop arguing, make good. I was going to say, this actually made Forbes, which is yeah. crazy. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. And and, uh, and when I read that, was it uh, yesterday? I think it, I think it came out yesterday. Mm. Or yeah. uh, the, the article? Yeah. And so, and so when you know, it came up with my feed, I'm like going, just like what you had to do is re rehash the whole thing. I'm like going, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. yeah, all right. But I think you're right. It's all about the movie. Mm. I think it's all about the movie because I think they, they want that franchise. Yeah. I, I think they, they, they feel, Sony feels maybe that perhaps Star Wars is finally tired out. <laughs> I well, just, I'd be curious to see making Macross into a live action. Oh, yeah. I mean, the I mean, interpersonal reaction, you know, yeah. to, to one another, that's, that's 
people being people, but it's all the technology surrounding it right. that it's like, okay, are we gonna we're gonna do this well? Are we gonna do this Pacific Rim kind of thing, or are we gonna do this like poorly? <laughs> like, oh <laughs> no, no, don't do it terribly. <laughs> I don't know what terrible means. <laughs> <laughs> Sci- sci-fi channel movie of the week versus okay. like well put. you know hundreds of billions of dollars worth of technological <laughs> expertise you know just saying yeah, yeah. i don't know um I-, I do suspect this is one of those things where probably somebody at sony got somebody on the line to say hey dude just can we move this forward and then it moved forward from there like i i, I doubt that sony was like breathing down people's necks about this um, but I think it was Sony thing... Goon Squad. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, but it was probably they're like, they're the ones know. with the baseball bats. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and uh, and, and anyway, the Sony I... Wiffle Bat hurts like hell. <laughs> trust me. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a live action adaptation, right? Like, in, yeah. you know, it, it's hard to do that. <clears throat> you, you do that well. Um, but yeah, it's uh, well. That's the thing, Colin. I am I am absolutely certain that the Robotech. Name and brand means more in America than Macross does. Yeah, to, to the to the yeah. general populace. Yeah. So I think if you make that movie, you do, you call it Robotech, you do not call it Macross. Um, That's right. And um, and who knows? Um, you know the the well, and they they did a live action version of Yamato, right? Like you know. That's the thing that, that happened. Oh, did they? Yeah, they, they sure did. Oh, did multiple they? Movies. <laughs> oh, did they? Yeah. <laughs> Um, with the 30 minutes farewell to the dead <laughs> spirit scene where he's you know triumphantly the only one last one on the ship that's still alive to trigger the it's gun it's wave it's a, motion gun it's a it's a patient movie uh, the, 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 those are movies that kind of take their time um the patient movie I, usually the trauma I will war say, the coma division <laughs> I, I did love how they changed the doctor i love the new doctor in the live action versions that she's she's great oh, um okay. but um yeah I, I i'm curious the other question is um okay so we have macross and macross is an, is an odd franchise because you have original macross you had macross 7 um you had macross 2 which nobody really liked um uh macross 7 um and then you had macross plus and you have kind of a gap. Um, and you had all this, that kind of impressive stuff. Then you have, you know, Macross Frontier, Macross Delta, more recent shows. Right. What do you release first? Like, if, if you have that franchise, do you go back, like, 30 years to Macross 7? Do you jump forward to Frontier, which is also kind of a, an anniversary project referencing other stuff? Do you right. jump straight to Delta, which is very recent? Well, just, uh, you know, being a, a linear kind of, mm. you know, person, it would be nice to see in-universe linear release. Sure. So start at the beginning and then whatever, you know, completes the storyline mm. in a sensible way. Mm. <laughs> don't, you know what I mean? Don't like yeah. if, if you have yeah. like, what is the well, fate, the fate stay kind of thing where you have right. to watch yeah. certain parts of it in certain order. And that's the problem is if they released Macross 2, that would be the next thing to, to do. And that was famously disliked. <laughs> that, that it didn't quite kill the franchise, but so for those not familiar, Legend has it that, um, so what happened, and again, getting back to this whole Big West thing, um, Big West basically decided, as I understand it, to make Macross 2 without getting any of the original production staff involved. They just said, hey, we have the rights to this thing, let's just make a sequel. Um, and it's bad. Um, it is one of the few anime where I got partway through and decided not to watch any more of it. Um, like, I didn't just, you know set it aside i was like i am done i am not coming back to this wow no so, so you rage quit i i basically rage quit it um I wow. and in fairness it wasn't it wasn't horrible it was just like i don't care about any of these characters i don't care about any of the plot like this is all just incredibly uninteresting um and so it didn't I, I, really effectively build on all the groundwork from macross itself not really no um, oh jeez! The, the, the characters, the, the the new main characters are twerp. 
um, the woman that he gets involved with, the, the space woman he gets involved with, is just generic sort of, oh, I'm, 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 I'm a mysterious woman from space. Um, to be clear, there are folks who like Macross too, and I can understand liking Macross too. It's one of those right. things where it's just, all of these pieces were just like, I... No. But it's okay. Um, and apparently... Um, Shoji Kawamori was so pissed off at Macross 2, he said, I'm going to show you how to make a Macross. And he made Macross Plus. And Macross Plus was him giving the finger to Big West to make a real Macross thing. And that's Ooh. why we have Macross Plus. Um, <laughs> so Macross 2 made one of those things where everyone's like, we'll get to this later. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Not now. I don't know. Um, hmm. It's it's tough, but then, of course, Macross Plus has definitely been released quite a bit. Um, yeah. So I don't know if you jump to something that has a good amount of uh, franchise recognition. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I would hope by now that yeah. Macross itself has enough franchise recognition yeah. that people would still gravitate towards it. But sure. yeah, it's kind of. I just yeah. I like releases of things oh. that are, are that are in a process that I can yeah. follow the storyline better I just, versus I, jumping around. I don't think Do You Remember Love has had a release, an official release over here. Has it? Has Macross do, Mac do You Remember Love? Like the, the, the original movie. Has that no, had well, a, they, they chopped release? it they chopped it down they, to something yeah, called Clash of the Bion. Oh, right, 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 right. Right, right yeah. And they, they, I mean, it's still like a good uh, 85% of the film. Okay. I mean, it's cut for length and it's cut uh, for content. Yeah. Um. But I don't know that the unedited yeah. original Japanese theater I'm, re release. I'm looking up uh, on Wikipedia. It looks like it has not. Um, yeah. Uh, there was um, uh, Carl Maycheck said he he had planned to to release it, but was unable to do that. Do so. Um, then there was uh, the the other the, the various versions. There was a wow, Toho commissioned a dub. Of Do You Remember Love in the late 80s. Um, and? Um, and apparently was released somewhere. <laughs> but it, Can Canada. Yeah. And <laughs> it might have been, well, it, and it was named Super Space Fortress Macross in Japan. So it may have been like a Japanese release with an English dub. Wow. Interesting. Um, and then Clash of the Bionoids by Celebrity Home Entertainment. Yeah. Um, and I then, have that on VHS, and I would not recommend it. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry. Uh, the head of Animago said he wanted to, but um, couldn't. Get, you know, was said the rights were just too too complicated. There was a UK release in the nineties oh. um, on video, home videos of VHS, and then there was there's a Swedish release with a Swedish dub. So you can get that. Um, wow, so, I would almost want. I would almost want to watch. Yeah, that absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> um, so yeah, that was that, that's interesting. So yeah, there, so that's it. That's what that's you do first. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So yeah, but that's not all the news, folks. We're, we're just getting started. We got some Macross. We got some other stuff. Uh, we got some some animation news, which is pretty cool. Um, if you or anyone you know is hoping to work in the anime industry. Another opportunity has opened up as of this week. Studio Pinoc opened applications this week for its new animator training program. The Principles of Animation Program, or PPAP for short, uh, aims to train young animators to work f on feature-length animated films. No academic re record or prior experience is required to apply. People of any nationality are welcome as long as they can communicate in Japanese. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Bang. Yeah. The year-long program includes a guaranteed contract of employment and a monthly remuneration. Um, and a system has been established to hire animators as full-time employees after the training period ends. Pretty cool. Um, <laughs> along with the training program, Panok is also looking to hire um, uh, graduates as full-time employees in production assistants and in between animator roles. The studio says they believe the current animation industry is faced with a chronic shortage of creators. Although Japanese hand-drawn animation is increasingly popular all over the world, there are not enough skilled creators to keep up with all the number of new animated works. Uh, raising new skilled creators is necessary for the entire industry, and Pinocchio is concerned if the industry takes too long to cultivate that new talent, it'll cause problems with training and with capital. 
Um, Studio Pinoc was founded uh, back in 2015 by uh, Yoshiaki Nishimura, producer of The Tale of Princess Kaguya, and when Marnie was there, it also employs other former Studio Ghibli animators. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Would you do it? I mean, I can speak Japanese. Like, None. three or four words of it. <laughs> Does that count? Right. <laughs> like, it can I do says, that? says communicates in None. Japanese. That's all it said. Yeah, it didn't say good None. Japanese or, like, fluent Japanese. I, oh, sure. <laughs> I think the greater problem is uh, I can't draw to save my life. Yeah, right. Well, that's what you're there for. They're going to train you to draw, right? Like, we, we just, oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure I'm untrainable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you know, Flippy the Idiot Seal. I'm pretty much untrainable. <laughs> this is another interesting but I would if I could. Yeah, yes. I would if I could. Um, yes. They don't mention in here um, if they have any facilities. Because um, I know a lot of these training programs, like they'll have dorms, they'll have you right. know, options for you. So even if you're not getting paid, you know, massive amounts, you're being taken care of, basically. Right. So I don't know how how much this is, um, and where that fits into that. They've got we'll a come with foot a foot trailer out back with right. a with a single rotating fan and mats <laughs> on the floor. That's it. You animators go and live in there. Fans, luxury. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say they're gonna put us up in a castle in my day, Japan. Yeah. <laughs> Keep dreaming that one, Steve. <laughs> Three square meals a day of the finest foods you can ask for living in an old cat. No. No. Yeah. Cup ramen if you're lucky. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, be curious to see where that goes to see how, uh, how well they're able to fill out those ranks. Hope it works out for them. Well, I mean, uh, is this... Is this... I mean, not that I'm saying it's not legit, mm -hmm. but are they looking at a, a dearth of animators? Is that a yeah. is people? Is this not a thing that people want to do, and so they're running out of people to do it? Basically, um, well, the industry doesn't pay enough to attract a large talent pool, right? Um, enough to attract, you know, a significant talent pool, um, but not enough to like have people banging down their doors, um, and that's a problem. Well, does that mean that you get to demand higher? wages then if there's fewer of you and you could say hey if you want to animate all these things i'm the only person in town so you better pay me more well just remember unions are weak in japan mm -hmm. yeah so they're if not there's, there's no animated union that i know of in japan yeah oh yeah sounds like that might need to be a thing that happens then yeah good luck yeah yeah because yeah, it'll be more like a shin chan when with the episode where he demands <laughs> something and then the next cuts to him standing in the corner sulking <laughs> kind of it. yeah oh, um, that's sad. And, well it, it's also the, the issue that um i forget who it was in the anime industry who talked about this he said the problem is um there is no mr money bags right you know, there's no person with massive amounts of money who's hoarding it laughing hysterically and not letting the poor animators get paid. The budgets are small. Right. Uh, the budgets are small because this is part of this whole budget for this whole process, you know, franchising this thing, and that is a certain size. And, you know, the, the publisher only has a certain amount of scale because this manga is selling great, but we don't have $10 billion to put into it. So it's like there's, there's no real easy valve to pull to you know, right. increase everyone's salaries by... 50%. So uh, basically, the industry doesn't have a very good um, producer, actual producer, and what they need to probably do is get away from the committee mm -hmm. setup yeah. and go into an actual like movie production yeah. um, roles and actually have people to be producers who are not necessarily, by the way, money bags, but they are the people who have access to the people who do have money. Right. Yeah. Well, and that's the other, and you're absolutely right. The, the issue of the production committee is that you know. Everyone's on the production committee, including the person who has who has the money. So it's like, well, you know, if they're the ones who we're going to for the money, we can't just suddenly pull somebody else in with more money unless they want that person. So it's yeah, I think that that's a really important mm -hmm. restriction on everything. Um, yeah. As opposed to a producer who can say, hey, I'm this awesome, you know, I'm uh, Tusk. Um, yeah. Uh, um, uh, Kevin Smith had this crazy dumb idea for a movie about a guy who goes and uh, um, agrees to free rent in exchange for getting uh, dressed up as a walrus once a month. Um, and oh, big, I think big, big a horror movie. Yeah. yeah. Um, and people would just show up and say, here's money. You know, we're a production company. Here's money. We want to see if you make this. Like, this is, this is just, we, we just, we, 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 this is popcorn for us. Like, here, here's, here's cash. 
Um, and that's the, that's the kind of thing you can do when it, when it is a, an auteur person who can attract talent. And if he doesn't have enough money, he can just go out and find other people who will bring right. in the, the cash, yeah. You're not beholden to Mazda to provide funding where you might be able, <laughs> production-wise, to be like Mazda, Toyota, and Suzuki will all throw money in. And, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right, gotcha. Gotcha. So, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's tough. It's a thing. Yeah, and, you know, if, we, if I mean, Colin's absolutely right. If animators in Japan got paid like animators in America, we'd have less anime. Like that is, that is the, There's some point. the current yeah. economics of it. Like, yeah. We'll see. Hmm. Um, but the good news is there's a lot being done. Folks are aware of the problem. Folks are, you know, addressing it and trying to, to make steps. Fingers crossed. Yeah. yeah. Um, moving on to happier and um, kind of more world recordy news. Um, Taka Saito's GoGo13 manga is no stranger to setting records, already being the oldest manga still in publication, and the second best-selling manga series in history, after, no. of course, One Piece. Um, <laughs> uh, this week, the Hitman, seri Hitman series is coming for another record, having officially tied with uh, Osamu Akimoto's Kochikame manga in the Guinness World Record for, quote, most volumes published for a single manga series, end quote. Kochikame's 200th and final compiled book volume was released in November 2016, and Golgo 13's 200th compiled volume shipped on Monday, and considering Golgo 13 is still ongoing, we might just hear news of it breaking that record in the near future. The manga wow. has been running continuously since it began Man. in 1968. Yep. Uh, it had its first <laughs> ever hiatus in the summer of 2020 due to COVID-19, and even that break was for a whole two months. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the story has been heading towards its conclusion for the past five years. Um, <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, and uh, Saito commented back in 2013 that because he often worried about his manga getting canceled, he has an ending planned out, even down to the panel layout, but somehow a sudden cancellation seems unlikely after running for 52 years. Um, wow. The manga has inspired two live-action films, an anime film, an OVA, TV anime series, and six video games. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so so the so the anime film for Golgo thirteen mm. is one of the first anime movies to, to actually use CGI. Oh cool. Hmm. It's horrible. <laughs> it's a product of its time. Mm -hmm. But um when I rented it from <clears throat> Errols. Of course, yep. Yep. Back back in the day. Um okay. A local local video cassette Arrows, chain, home video, and later internet. Arrows, uh, okay. Yeah, and um, it, the, the big deal was, oh, you get to see CGI for computer generated graphics for the first time. It was literally like eight bit helicopter, <laughs> like <laughs> flying around on a white screen of, oh. around the build a golden building. <laughs> that was really nice. just blocks, and it's just like it, like like it was a video game, like something was shooting at it. So the block was like. Ding. Yeah. Oh, it's Space Invaders. And no. it lasted, and it lasted, I think, like three minutes. Wow. I think that's if I remember correctly. <laughs> that's and, and then, to and, and it went, thing. and it, and the thing of it was, is it went from the anime animation, and a cutscene to the CGI, mm -hmm. and then after the one little loop it did around the building and shoot at it, it cut back to the anime. Mm -hmm. <laughs> awesome breakdown uh, just, just yeah a breakthrough of, of mm -hmm. technology yeah we've come a long way <laughs> just, oh. that apple mac 2 did some heroic yeah. work there <laughs> <laughs> the trs 80 as it sounds like um, oh baby <laughs> Now don't start breaking out the trash 80 we don't want to wow yeah. people here <laughs> no kidding um i i own Books on how to program the trash eighty. Um, boy, that was a, that was a time. Um, yeah. I, I I had the the learn it on cassette how to program yeah. the trash eighty. No, I that, that's <laughs> that's one of the books that yeah absolutely. Yep. Is it sitting there? Let's see if I pull it up. Anyway, well, this this one it was a cassette recorder. Yeah. Oh yeah. And yeah. you hooked it in. Yeah. The trash so you absolutely. Played yeah. the yeah. Cassette, Play cassette and then yep. it instructed you on the computer. Yep. Oh yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> no idea how that. Mm -hmm. My my older brother had one of those. He, he had a Trash JD with a cassette and all that. And he yep. could program my, that was... my basic programming skills. Yes. Basic <laughs> A, GW basic. 
basic go to a ten run. Go to go to ten. Yeah. Ah. Yep. Um, moving on to Gundam news. Um, Gundam's been been doing a few things recently. Uh, if you ever built a plastic model kit, you know that once you punched out all the usable pieces, and hopefully not lost any, there's still a lot of plastic left over in the form of the runners, those frames that hold all the actual components of the model. Um, after more than 700 million Gunpla kits have been sold since their inception. Wow. Yeah. 700 million? 700 million. <laughs> wow. Bondi decided that they might need a solution to keep from throwing away all that plastic in the future. Uh, this week, the company announced the new Gunpla Recycling Project, where all those excess runners can be collected and recycled into more usable plastic. Gunpla Recycling Boxes are being installed in Namco game centers across Japan, where model builders can deposit the leftover runners. Three different methods of recycling will then be used in the plastic. As depicted on the flowchart, yep, the flowchart down there, um, <laughs> there's chemical oh. recycling, where the polystyrene plastic will be broken down into raw materials for new plastic. Mechanical recycling, where they're basically crushed into granules for reforming, uh, which is how uh, the, the gunpla is actually, uh, how those kits are actually, done. they're all granules that are then like ejection molded. Pelletized um, plastic yeah. stuff, yeah. And then um, uh, thermal recycling, where they basically, anything that can't be processed those ways is burned for heat and energy, uh, reducing electricity. Mm. Um, the new recycling boxes have already been installed at Namco locations in Kawasaki and Osaka. And Bandai plans to have them in all, in, uh, all approximately 190 locations in Japan in the near future. Ooh. Which, of course, begs the question is, what number <laughs> is is all the all the, run, the runner material? Is it one, two, four, oh, it's, five? It's, I believe it's custom. Um, like, they, they, they have their own plastic that they use. I mean, I'm sure it's... It, it, I say custom. Um... I don't think it is like one, two, or five, but it is like an industrial plastic that they, they use. That it's okay, standard, but not like... It makes me, you know, wonder all yeah. the models I built as a kid. It's like, yeah, gosh, I mean, the whole, throwing the all box out, just tons of the runners. <laughs> yeah. like, it never even occurred to me. It's like, yeah, the paperboard box, that's easy. You can just mm -hmm. put it in the paper cardboard recycling. But yeah. The runners, I just throw in the trash because I, mm -hmm. yeah. I didn't know what to do with it. Absolutely. <laughs> like, um, yeah, boy, um, you, you have... how. Uh, how many ounces do you think is one of those, those you know, a, a gunplay's worth of runners? Um, you know, let's say maybe six ounces? Yeah, I'd, I'd say be that, go that one. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's... Because it's usually like, what, at least six frames worth mm -hmm. of parts, if not more, mm -hmm. depending on how, how the size of the Gundam. So if I have my math correctly, um, they have sold approximately... 262 million pounds of runners. Wow. Over the past 50 years, you know, whatever it's been. It's still a lot of plastic. That's uh, presumably in landfills. Yep. I mean, I don't know whether it was, you know, that'd be a good question too. It's like for Japan, uh, would that be a burnable or would that mm. be a just a trash item? Yeah. Um, according to my calculations, that's 131,000 tons. Of plastic, Eesh. just for the runners. <laughs> a lot of that's a lot of petrochemicals. A lot of petrochemicals. It very much is. And again, you you get the thing. Um, uh, uh, you know, if you recycle them, you can actually make use of them, right? Like yeah. it, it's not just okay, they'll degrade eventually. Then they're not actually part of the whole process. Um, well, and especially like the gosh, the master grades. Like you got twelve runners in those things. Like they're crazy. Um, wow. But yeah. Use, uh, and that pellet, so, pelletized uh, plastics and stuff, I mean, they're used for all kinds of industrial mm -hmm. uh, forms and moldings yeah. and stuff like that. So it doesn't even, you know, that has a greater applicability just beyond even yeah. making new. Yeah, companies. oh, absolutely, yeah. Right. You know, you can make new chairs for stuff and mm -hmm. seats and mm -hmm. all kinds of other jazz. Yeah. So. Um, and thank you, Chauncey. It's an industrial poly polymer they use about four major poly polymer types, it sounds like. Damn. Um, wow. There's a really cool video on YouTube. Um, it's a behind the scenes of the Gunpla factory. Um, Ooh, I'd like to see that. Yeah, and it's I think it's produced by Bondi, and it just kind of uh, you know video footage of, of them. It's like 20 minutes long or something, and then you see the various designers who are designing it, and the robots that go around. It's an entirely um, automated facility for the actual production of the Gunpla. Um, it's really cool, and yeah. So it's like the old House It Made series. <laughs> done there, for yes, Gunpla. exactly. Um, okay. Uh, it all looks like a Federation base because, of course, 
Um, <laughs> everyone wears Federation uniforms as their, like, you know, work, work outfit. Uniforms? Yeah, work uniform. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. Um, and John, that's a very good question. How many, how many mothers will go, oh, good, it's recyclable, and just toss the entire gun plug into the, <laughs> the recycling <laughs> bin? Uh, or t- toss the, uh, the, the spare parts or yes, the extra oh, yeah. parts stuff for the you know different version of the model that you're like i should oh, hold that's on that's my b-max that. you're like, no. <laughs> the booster pack where was the booster pack it was in the box <laughs> oh, i recycled it honey <laughs> oh. <laughs> what did you do and that's that's the tough thing because i have that. no mother yeah um yeah they don't sell those accessories separately yeah they're the they're box. into the box yeah <laughs> oh my god fortunately gunplay is not that expensive um also this week, um, just news items to mention in passing. The JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Stone Ocean manga is getting an anime adaptation. This is the sixth part of the JoJo manga. It originally ran from 1999 to 2003, and it follows Jolene, the daughter of the protagonist from the third story arc. Um, TV anime is in the work on the sci-fi spy manga Tesla Note, written in part by Tiger and Bunnies, Masafumi Nishida. So it's exciting. Um, Kazuyoshi Takeda's World War II manga Pelelu Guernica of Paradise ended this week, which also yeah. revealed it's getting an anime adaptation as well as a new spin off manga. The story takes place during World War II's Battle of Pelelu between the U.S. Mm-hmm. and Japan and follows a Japanese soldier who wants to make manga. Pelelu was a horrible meat grinder. I. Wow. Yeah. It sounds, it sounds like Shigeru Mizuki. Mizuki story. Yeah. Uh-huh. Ah, wow. I really want to see that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah I, I, I want to see how that's treated. Oh, yeah, boy. Yeah. Um, I do not know if, if the manga is available in English, um, if it's been oh, translated or whatever, but man. Yeah. So that is, uh, um, again, it is uh, Penelu Guernica of Paradise. Yeah. Wow. Um, TV anime series is also in the works for the romantic comedy manga A Couple of Cuckoos, which will premiere in 2022. Um <laughs> I've seen this recommended a lot to me on uh, on Amazon, so I think it's kind of making the rounds. Um, okay. It's a romantic comedy about high schoolers Nagi and Erica who learned that they were accidentally uh, switched at birth, and their parents have decided to fix the error by having them marry each other. Um, that totally makes sense. <laughs> that totally makes sense. Absolutely. That's how that works. Um, George Asakura's ballet manga, Dance Dance Dansur, is also t- inspiring a TV anime, which is his first uh, TV anime adaptation. Um, film production companies Spark Lilling and Storytelling have launched a new Magical Girl theme project, currently titled, and I love this, Untitled Magical Girl, tentative. Um, <laughs> um, the plan is to use what they describe as the chronicle of magical girls as a starting point to portray the image of young girls in their youth as reflected in the magical girls of that era. And will depict the struggles of magical girls who pursue their own ideals uh, rather than the values created by others. Did they have an attorney write this? That says yeah. absolutely <laughs> nothing, nothing. Well, yeah. and yet is a, a big sentence. <laughs> it, 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 it does to me that it's 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 about it's the lens of girls exploring um, you know their futures through the values of magical girls series in different eras. So how are '80s magical girls different from '90s magical girls different from '2000s magical girls? Hmm. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm, I'm intrigued. Well, it, it'll, it'll be coming up on a watch party, I'm yeah, sure, sometime, I'm sure. sometime at a, <laughs> at a, at a yeah. anime archaeology near you. Yes, um, <laughs> the, the artwork they did release a uh, key art for it, and they're they're clearly kind of evoking the like costume styles as opposed to like the 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 character designs, right? So hmm. the, the, they have various magical girls that kind of have different. Um, yeah, costume variations but not like trying to make it like, like a 90s girl a 2000s girl an 80s right. girl right so a valley so, girl meets like a yuppie <laughs> girl like, uh, tired exactly um, a collaboration was announced between the upcoming Detective Conan Scarlet Bullet film and the web anime Black Channel um, there'll be two anime premiering on April 14th and 16th so this coming up week um, titled What Happens If I Become a Great Detective and what happens if I become a sharpshooter? So presumably kind of uh, them imagining each other's universes. 
Um, I'm not aware of a crossover with Jacob Conan since Lupin, so who knows if it's going in, in that direction. Um, finally, a tribute exhibition opened in New York's Philippe Le Bon Gallery on Thursday, dedicated to acclaimed manga artist Katsuhiro Otomo. The exhibition showcases Ooh. original artwork by Otomo, plus illustrations from 29 international artists, paying homage to the Akira manga. It was titled, Good for Health, Bad for Education, <laughs> <laughs> a tribute to Otomo. And if you haven't heard of the, the Philippe Le Bon Gallery, no surprise, this is the gallery's inaugural exhibit. Nice. So they're doing some of that. Um, Obviously, and, they're open despite yes, you know, the exactly. COVID issues. Exactly. Interesting. Um, and finally, um, oh, this is this is in the wrong place. One second. Uh, let me just shift this around, and we will be we'll, we'll be there. Um, I forgot that I didn't have that uh, down there. I really need to show you this. Um, oh. It is it is worth seeing. Um, my goodness, people, people, you know, decisions were made. You know, um, things happened. Hopefully, good decisions, right? Well, Please. decisions, decisions. You know, um, did they involve fire? No, um, but they they did. They do wake up on fire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, um, but they do involve Evangelion. Um, uh, Electroids this week launched. What else? An Evangelion Unit 01 USB charger. You can uh, buy a oh, that, yeah. Evangelion bust yes. that you plug into your computer. I saw that USB thing. has USB ports on it. Yes. And of course, I, wa I want it. It lights up. I must have this. More money that I don't have mm -hmm. to spend on. Yep. But does it talk? Not that I'm aware of. Damn. <laughs> it has three USB C and three. Um, uh, full size USB Type A uh, plugs on there, um, and so you can plug in to Unit One yourself. You know, if it's the right <laughs> size and you could fit like something like a Raspberry Pi in there, mm -hmm. you could make that just a Evangelion CPU. Mm -hmm. okay. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 product opportunity, Brent. Product opportunity. <laughs> I... Get into the ground floor. <laughs> of all the companies I don't want to try to get licensing for, <laughs> Gainax is near the top. <laughs> or Studio Kara now, I suppose. Which wouldn't yeah, be quite fair enough, I guess. Uh, <laughs> and John says, yeah, now the question is, it only lasts five minutes when it's unplugged. Uh, yeah. That's a, yeah. <laughs> good, good Probably. Good <laughs> yeah. Um, that's all the news for this week. Thanks all for watching.